to this edition of the Airbrush Academy blog and tutorial video. Uh, so this week I'm going to introduce the first step uh, of a multiple video instalment on monotone portraits. Um, so you can see I've got a couple uh, of printouts here. One is a standard black and white um, photocopy and one is what I've done as a full colour printout. And so what I want to understand is that just because it's monotone that it doesn't need to necessarily just be black and white. Um, so what I'm going to do is run through how I mix and match colours. Um, this one here, the printout has got a, a slight red hue to it and I want to be able to show you and get you to understand on how I'm going to create that and how I'm going to add that hue to the painting. Um, this, this way of working a lot will make your work stand out. Uh, from everyone else, everyone else's. Um, it, 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 the, the general consensus is that when you're doing a monotone portrait that everyone reaches for black. Uh, one of the things that I always won throughout my career of painting and doing whatever I was doing was I always went that little bit further uh, and just pushed it to, to, to that next level. Uh, sometimes it take me, took me twice as long to do it but the results were far superior. Um, and I want to share that with you over the next sort of four, five, six maybe videos. Uh, so hopefully we should be able to give you an instalment every week um, to keep it running. And uh, and if you are following this, uh, please let us know how you're doing. We'd love to see what your work is. We'd love to see how you're getting along with it. And if there's anything uh, you're unsure of about this, you can always email us at mick at mcneil.com um, or drop us a Facebook message or just use the comments below. Um, so if you haven't already and you want to follow this series, please click subscribe um, because every week you'll get a notification telling you that the next instalment's ready. Um, so let's crack on, let's get in up close and let's, let's talk about how I'm going to get ready with mixing the colours uh, and setting up ready to paint this portrait. Okay, so uh, before we start, <clears throat> one of the things I always do is I've just got a piece of paper uh, and I've cut a square out of it. This will allow me to isolate an area um, and pick up on a colour or a tone uh, that I'm looking for to match. So if I was looking at sort of a, a, a mid-tone, uh, I could isolate it to, to that area. Uh, and I've also got uh, just a piece of paper cut into strips. Uh, this will allow me to spray uh, on the ends and I can use that underneath with my colour and the colour of the photo that I'm, tr I'm trying to reproduce. This will uh, isolate everything from around it, uh, any of the contrast that we get uh, which will lead us not to match in the colour correctly. Uh, at this point we can look at it and we can match it quite well but we've got a lot of contrast, there's a lot of darker areas, a lot of lighter areas uh, which can all play havoc with our eyes. Okay so I've got rid of the photo copy one we're going to use that for uh, line drawing purposes uh, because it's more of a draft printout. But this is the one I want to reproduce, so I'm looking at this colour. Um, you can already see it compared, if we put this one in, uh, that this one is it's a lot more interesting. There's a lot more depth there. Um, it's, it's a lot... It may seem a lot more advanced to do, but it's generally the same. Uh, but it's just adding that colour to it. Uh, so what I want to be looking for is a, a mid-tone. <clears throat> so I want to be looking at this sort of middle tone here. So we've got the lighter areas. Um, and we want to try and find the line in between the sort of, not the darks, but then the next step. So from there we've got darks here. And we've got a light tone there. So this light tone here relates to a lot of uh, the lighter areas I can see. So I want to try and find the middle part. So let's say, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there. Uh, a better area to look at is this, this part here. And so I need to isolate that area. So what I need to do now is I need to sort of mix and match that colour. Um, so I'm going to start off with my standard grey mix. Okay, so I've got my 50-50 grey mix. I'm going to put it into one of these uh, little shot glasses. And this will allow me to, to have a vi good visual reference of it as well. 
So the first colour that we're going to reach for uh, is obviously going to be either a red or a violet. So we've got this uh, colour we're looking for. We can see the grey. Uh, so I'm going to add the closest colour to it. So I'm thinking that let's add a drop of red. So only two or three drops. I can see straight away from that just a couple of drops to it it has gone a little bit rich um, so but I want to spray it out first uh, just to see what it looks like uh, against our reference so let's get our little uh, paint swab I'll add this to the airbrush Let that dry. And let's have a look at it against our reference. Okay, so I'm going to isolate the area we've chosen, which is that part there, and let's add in our colour swatch just to see what we've got. Let's see if we can go a little bit closer for you. Okay, so you can see there that we're a lot richer than what we need to be. Um, so using some colour theory, uh, we're going to go for a complementary colour of red. So that's a little bit too rich. Um, it's a little bit too pink. So I want to cancel out some of that red if I can. So if we look at the colour wheel, the complementary colour or the opposite colour to red uh, is green. So I'm going to pour some of this out just for you to see what it looks like now uh, and I'm going to show you with the effect of when we add a complementary colour um, to cancel another colour rather than adding another colour to make it more of that colour if that makes sense. Um, so let's have a look at that one now. Okay so here's our original mixed colour. So let's just pour some of that out onto there just so you can see um, what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a green, so let's just add one, two drops of green uh, and just give that a little swirl around and let's add a little okay so you can see already that it's not sent the colour green it's more likely cancelled out some of that red so it's pulled it back towards the center of the color wheel so uh, because we we're using black and white to start with this is going to be mainly because we used white this is going to be an opaque color um, so it's going to be quite a heavy strong color which is good for our main base layer uh, because if we're making any mistakes there's some great hiding power with an opaque color uh, and it'll stop us going too dark with our painting to start with um, so if we're just using uh, a transparent colour in initially we can keep adding more and more paint and the more transparent colour you add uh, the darker uh, the colour gets until it gets closer to the colour what it is in the bottle so it's easy to add more paint um, but with this way it doesn't matter how many once we've got to full coverage with, with the colour it doesn't matter how much more we add it'll always be that colour so it's a great controlling uh, way of working and it'll also give our portrait and our, our base um, some good opacity uh, and give it sort of uh, a good solid base for our transparency which will go over the top um, so let's test this colour against it and let, let's see what it looks like okay so now we're getting close uh, what I've done on the, the colour swatch is I've gone quite dark there and faded it out towards the bottom. Uh, so this will help me find a sort of a middle a middle tone uh, to see if I can sort of work lighter with the paint. See if I can pick up that edge. 
Um, so I'm almost there with that. We just still need to be. I'm going to add one drop of uh, violet, and I think we'll be done with that. So let's crack on with that and let's get on ready uh, to look at the next colour. So I added one more drop of violet to the mix uh, and you can see it's, it's brought it down that little bit deeper and got the colour more or less where it needs to be. But what I'm doing here is I'm using the colour just to try and detail a little bit. I'm trying to replicate uh, some of the textures that I'm seeing just to see how that colour works with it. Um, so you can see there I'm quite happy with that and um, we can be able to get some good detail and good level with the colour. Um, so we can move on to our, mixing our next colour. So just to recap what we did, um, we started off with our grey tone, which is, if you look at this centre band on this colour wheel, is the grey uh, sort of desaturated area of the colour. So what we done, we added red, uh, which was here, and it sort of gave us, let's say, around this colour here. Uh, to bring that back down more towards that grey scale, we used a complementary colour, which was green. So we added that to bring that down just a touch. Um, but when I looked at the this colour against it, I decided that it needed to be more sort of here. So originally we should have maybe used a magenta, uh, which would have given us this, this line. So we added uh, a drop of violet, which pulled this colour round towards this way. Uh, so we ended up with this colour. Um, so with any of these colours, if we add it to it, if your portrait you wanted a blue hue to it, um, we'd start with the grey, let's add the blue to it, and if we wanted to control that blue and bring it back down this way, we would add the opposite colour, which would be yellow or an orange-yellow, sort of around here, to bring that um, closer to that grey scale. So we control the colour, uh, and we can desaturate it, or take the, the cancel the colour out by adding the complementary colour or the opposite colour. Okay, so before we, we get into any painting, uh, so we've got this sort of mid-tone colour here which we've mixed. What I want to be looking at is this darker tone. I don't just want to use black. I will use um, a, a little bit of black in just some areas sort of here uh, and coming round onto the top of the shoulders there because it's really dark. Uh, there is uh, shadow underneath the bottom here so I'll use a little bit of black there as well. Um, it's not going to matter because it is uh, effectively a monotone uh, painting. Even though we're using colour, we can still use black for this. It'll add massive contrast for what we've got. Um, so what I want to look at is this darker colour. So not the black, um, which is just going to be used minimally. Uh, we're going to be using this sort of darker shade here. So I want to start to mix that one. So we'll start off with our... Uh, little cup again and I'm going to go straight for uh, a black so it gives a good square to black uh, and I'll do the same as what I did before so I'm just going to add in uh, a good chunk of red because if we look uh, at the image um, and let's say if we pick it close to the camera this area here if we look at it compared to uh, the shoulder part it's not black so the red's going to lighten it up a touch Okay, so you can see from there, um, it's not quite black. The red's done a little bit of its job, uh, but it still needs to be a little bit warmer for me. Uh, what I'm looking at is the, see the lighter strands we've got there? That's the colour I want to be adding in, because with the with the final contrasting, uh, we can add those darker colours in and that black in a little bit lighter. So I still want it just to warm it up a little bit more, so I'm just going to add another couple of drops of red um, to get that where I need it to. Okay, 
so I'm fairly happy with that it's still a warmer colour than it is the, the black uh, and I think it'll give us a, a good contrast colour um, so I'm quite happy with that it's a similar um, or let's say the same family of colours uh, as the original one but remember this is just done using transparency there's no white or there's no opaque pigment in this I still want this to be quite transparent so uh, if I need to reduce it down a little bit so I can get lighter washes over uh, my opaque base uh, it'll give me those sort of blends that I'm looking for um, so we've got our two main colours I ain't going to worry about the black the black's just going to be black at the end um, so I'm quite happy to uh, start start the paint. So we're almost there with things, uh, and if things don't come first, especially when mixing colour, if they don't come straight away, keep practising. Have a good practice on mixing colour, even if it's just a case of getting used to cancelling other colours out and using and working your way around the colour wheel. So we're almost there and ready to start painting, but there's one more thing we need to do, and that's to create our line drawing. So before I go into the step by step with that, there's just a couple of things uh, I want to mention. Is the proportions uh, and the reference points are extremely important with a with a portrait. We've all seen artwork and things we can tell who the person is, but there's something not quite right, and it's usually down to the proportions of what they are, the distance between the eyes, the distance between the nose and mouth, uh, and and eyes and nose, and it's it's guesswork so I like to eliminate as much guesswork as possible so I usually do something of this detail I add in a line drawing or a map for me to follow if it's a soft edge let's say if we were adding some of these little pieces here I'm going to use a dotted line or a dashed line only very light I just need a small reference mark for me to follow uh, for darker lines let's say underneath this nose here uh, I can draw that in because it's so dark where it is, or it's a definite sharp edge, uh, I can draw that in, and uh, I'm going to paint over and up to that edge, so it doesn't really matter. The worst thing uh, that can happen really is when we've finished our painting, is to still see any uh, line drawing or dotted or drawing lines uh, on the painting, uh, because it, it, you know, a majority of people don't notice. I know they're there, and I'll get really annoyed with it. Uh, so if you're anything like me you will probably get annoyed with it as well uh, so from this distance as, I, as I'm working uh, I want to be able to sort of just see my line drawing uh, from a few two to three feet away I want to be able to, to I want to be straining to be able to see it I only just want to see it as I'm on top of it not many people who view your work are going to be viewing it from this distance um, so if I can't see it from a few feet away uh, then I'm ready to go so let's get into it, let's tell you all the tools and materials we're going to need uh, and get our line drawing done so we can ready to start the painting. Okay, so for the initial drawing, I've dropped back to my uh, photo copy or rough draft print and I've gone back to it just being in black and white. Uh, this will see uh, for me to show through uh, and draw through. I mean the photo paper is a little bit thicker, this is just printed on standard photo copy paper. And what I'm going to do is I've secured it along the top. You can secure it down either side, depending on which hand you, you're working, left or right-handed. Whichever's easier for you. What we just need to make sure is that it's secured, it's not going to move. So we can lift it up, we can check what we're doing, we can drop it back down, and it's in exactly the same place as where it was before. So what I'm also going to use is uh, graphite paper. Uh, now most of my work is done using this if I need to keep it realistic you can see that this one's been used quite a lot of times I find that this stuff gets better the more it's used so the older it gets the better it gets when it's brand new it tends to transfer quite a lot of graphite um, but I, again before I forget it's graphite paper and not carbon paper carbon paper is quite waxy and oily uh, and it's going to react with your paint uh, quite badly so the paint will either sit on top of it or it'll just disperse depending on the type of the paint you're using uh, so this is graphite paper you can get it in like a dark grey or a true graphite you can also get it in like a light grey uh, which doesn't mark as heavily so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that underneath make sure it's lined up to where it needs to be and now I can start to transfer this uh, line drawing onto the onto the panel if you haven't got graphite paper, what you can do is with a piece of paper, uh, we can, if we just, 
I don't want to press on there, but if we, with a soft pencil, if we can transfer uh, a little bit of graphite from there, and that'll just, I'm not sure whether the camera's picking that up, but we can do it the way we did at school, the old school way, and basically put graphite onto the back of this reference picture and then draw around it that way. And this will transfer enough graphite to, to give it a mark. So if you're using normal airbrush papers, this will transfer quite a lot of graphite. The synthetic papers, uh, not so much because of the, the type of surface and the, the same with uh, automotive surface. So if you're going to do this on an automotive surface, what we would say is paint the area white and then clear coat it, sand it down with around about an 800 grit uh, and maybe just a tickle with a thousand just to get rid of it. I'll find that anything more or more coarse, 600, 400 grit, uh, when you're doing subtle shades you tend to pick up some of those uh, scratch marks from, from the prep. Um, so that's a couple of bits for canvas as well, it works well on canvas. If you gesso the canvas uh, make sure that you use uh, what, what I tend to do is put a varnish over it, so a couple of coats of spray varnish, uh, and then give that a little nib. I find that gesso is quite abs really, really absorbent, uh, especially for airbrush work. And if you come to scrape or erase, then it doesn't seem to take it away because it just sucks the paint in. Uh, so a couple of good tips there. So. If it's gessoed, give it a couple of coats of spray varnish or use a satin varnish. Give that a little bit of a nib with a sandpaper uh, and that'll just give you a little barrier between the, the gesso uh, and it'll allow the paint to sit on top of it slightly rather than being absorbed in. So let's get in a little bit closer. I want to show you, I've started the line drawing but I want to show you on the, it's easier uh, because we've tested it against the camera. It's easier to show you on this, the sort of line drawing I'm going to create. So hopefully this will be picking up on camera that you can see just underneath the eyes uh, I've used a dotted line uh, and around the top part where it's dark and the pupils I've, I've drawn in as a solid line. You can also see just down this area and as these are a little bit more subtle again I've used a dotted line uh, to, to help transfer it. Um, so I'm going to look at around those areas. Uh, for areas like this where it's darker I'm going to be able to use a dotted line around that area but maybe the dots are just going to be just inside rather than on the edge because when I've blended over it it's going to hide those marks and I know the area that they need to be in. So hopefully if this picks up uh, you can see that I've picked out a couple of uh, areas so you can see underneath I've got the dotted line there which is only just there. I've drawn in the pupil, I've also drawn in the highlight that's not an issue, we can always add the highlight a little bit later, but you can see mainly the crease along the top of the eye is drawn in as well, uh, and I've carried on that down there where the, sort of the, the skin overlapped. And obviously in this is a little bit more difficult to see, you can see the dotted lines I've done, and I've followed it up to where it more or less stops, so that's given me a good reference point, uh, and I know how far to go with the painting. And I've also just picked out some of the shoulders, so I've got the shoulder area and the outer edge of the hair. I think I'm going to need to go in closer to show you this, but where the hair comes down this side, I've just done a couple of sort of directional lines. So if we drop that back down, what I've done is followed the direction of the hair just to show the start point of it. Uh, rather than me guessing and putting hair here and I need to work sort of half an inch back this way, I've started to just draw in those lines uh, from the start point to outwards uh, and I can monitor that as I'm working. Pretty much the same this side as well. I've just done uh, the direction of which way they're going. This will help me. And obviously I've got that line of where the face carries on up the side there. Uh, where there's a subtle transition sort of here, I've eased up for a little dotted or dashed line um, pretty much all the way down there. Um, and, there we, and, and there we have our main line drawing. I don't like to put any more than that in uh, because I like to create it with the airbrush. Uh, I don't like to go draw in all the sort of uh, nooks, the crannies. Uh, these little bits under here as well, I've, I've used a dotted line. 
Uh, but drawing all these in uh, is not for me. If you need, you put as much uh, work into this uh, and as much of a map as you need, and whatever, we all work differently. Uh, I'm happy with uh, where my eyes are, the nose, the feature lines, and make sure they're, they're where they need to be, and I'm happy to start work at that point. But if you want to add in uh, the creases uh, underneath the eyes, all the little bits that sort of the subtle lines, just be really, really subtle with them just enough for you to be able to see um, but hopefully after this uh, collection of videos you'll see how to create all these little subtle lines uh, anyway so you don't need to draw them in if, if it's important that they're there then draw them in uh, but really if I look at that sort of area of this cheekbone there uh, I don't need to add anything else in there this area is quite small I can add the odd little piece if there's some sharp lines there but it, if that's not there it's not going to affect the painting too much but these parts here 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 uh, and obviously down these sides here they need to be there um, so hopefully let's run through some of the bits that you're going to need uh, and then we can get ready to start painting with our first color okay so we, we are there uh, so for next week what we're going to need is we're going to need two of our reference pictures one which is a best photo print uh, I tend to always use a matte or a satin paper when I'm doing photos because I don't get any glare from it uh, and obviously either a photo copy or a rough draft print of the same image uh, printed to the same size so we've got a good uh, reference for our line drawing we're also going to need uh, graphite paper uh, we're going to need a piece of wire. Automotive wire is uh, best for, the, for this use. Uh, take the sheathing off it, we'll show you why next week. Obviously a scalpel blade, some coffee stirrers, uh, and obviously some eraser pencils. Uh, we are using the Faber-Castell Perfection 7057. Uh, great uh, eraser and more or less available from everywhere. If you struggle with them, give me a shout. Uh, we have them in our academy and our shop and we can ship worldwide if needed. Um, and that's pretty much it. Again, if you're going to go graphite paper, get yourself a nice uh, 3B or 4B pencil. Scribble on the back of the rough draft and we can use that to transfer our line drawing. Um, so I hope it's been informative. I hope it's, you've learned something a little bit about colour. Uh, and obviously painting it this way is going to be a lot more interesting than having it this way. Um, so we'll see you next week to get ready to start painting and um, for you to paint the best monotone portrait you've ever painted. See you next week.